Hey guys, Steve and Angela here. It is uh, Thursday, and Minnie's yeah. down here. It's Thursday, we're out taking a ride. We're cutting the week off a little bit short this week. It's the end of the month, so we're really focused on getting pending business paid rather than work, working new business, but we thought we'd give you another Friday, even though it's Thursday. I know it's complicated and confusing, but we're gonna give you an update for the week. We uh, had 13 appointments. Angela had 13 appointments this week. Wrote four, five. Mm -hmm. um, for what? About five grand? Yeah. Thereabouts. Okay. I had, uh, um, I'm working the uh, new program, our, our debt-free program. So I'm working, I'm working more session leads, but looking for a debt-free for life uh, or debt elimination uh, appointment. So I had um, one of those, closed it uh, for uh, $4,800. So collectively, we didn't hit our 10 grand, but we did about nine. So, uh, good week, good week. So, uh, you know, uh, do you have any comments about that? I mean, we didn't run the, the amount of appointments we normally run this week, primarily because it's the end of the month that we're putting up new business. I mean, uh, we're trying to get uh, pending business out. Yeah, and, so we and, also uh, had the pendings. Yeah. And, you know, like we talked about, I mean, there's some weeks that you start there are some weeks that I know when I I know when I sit down at my desk at 7.30 on Monday morning. I know. Just like, I just get that feeling. Like, it's just going to be a week. It's just going to be one of those great weeks. And, you know, it, everything just starts firing. And that when things start firing, you know, the important, the really important thing is to ride that momentum and ride that emotion, too, I think. To, you know, when things start going good... You gotta stay, you gotta allow that adrenaline to keep you, keep you going. Now how do you set your week up to make sure it's gonna be good? I think it's, you know, I wanna talk about it. The, 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 there's only a few things that cause agents to fail in this business. Um, and we'll go, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap the video up with that today, but, because I think it's important to, to, to know that. We talked about it on the, um, when we first started out. But, you know, how do you set your week up? It's not by accident. What do you, what do you, you cuz I know when you when Saturday especially Sunday uh, starts rolling around you're 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 doing you're thinking certain things to make sure you hit you're off with the right foot on Monday morning. Yeah, I mean and this again, this kind of goes back to the stuff that I don't know. What well, goes back to when I was a kid. You know, by Sunday evening we are usually kind of wrapping up our weekend. And so, you know, Again, I don't know if this is really what you're talking about, but I mean, on Sunday evenings, I try and do, I, I try and not take on or start new projects. I go in, I make sure that I've, uh, you know, I, I either have my leads if I have purchased them on Friday afternoon, or uh, that I go in if it's an automated system where I can just buy leads whenever, and I go in and I buy my leads and I get them printed. And really, that's about all that I do in my office. I just make sure that when I sit down on Monday morning, like they're there. Right, so, so that's, that's the first thing is you, is you, you have to get yourself in a frame of mind about you know wanting to have a good week. I think I, you know I, I relate to my golf swing. Last week I, had, I shot a great score, but I, I was preparing my mind. You know I, I realized that uh, leading up to leading up to the uh, to the round was I was preparing my mind to what that what you know what's not really the score necessarily, but what a good ball flight looked like, what a good swing looked like, and I was I was okay. already in my brain. On the first tee, I was looking at the scorecard, and I was playing the holes out in my mind. And anytime a negative swing thought would come to mind about me, you know, shanking the thing or topping the thing, whatever, I would immediately put it out of my mind and go back and see that ball flight. And you know, then I went and played the played played the round, put shot four over. So it, I know that it, that applies. You you know, what what mindset is a big deal. So yeah, uh, and it's a big deal for. And I think that part of that mindset is not having. Like if there are stressful things that if there are stressful things that we are dealing with, to be quite honest, if I can get them written down and, and kind of plotted for a certain day of the week that I'm going to deal with them, there are some kind of a, a elaborate phone calls that I have to handle. Uh, I'm you know I, I set a day that I'm going to plan and do those so that they're not necessarily the first thing that I wake up to on Monday morning. Uh, you know Sunday night. Like I said, I, I try and do an easy meal. I try and do, we try and eat a little bit earlier because I want to, you know, sometimes you work twice as hard on the weekends playing or doing stuff around the house or whatever it right, is. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 
<laughs> than you do almost during the week when you're working. I never, so, I never sweat during a during an appointment. I know during an appointment. Well, it's been a while since I sweated. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I try and not, um, overdo it on Sunday. Like by Sunday afternoon, by three or four o'clock, we're, we, or at least I am tending to kind of wind stuff down, you know, yep. the laundry, the household stuff, because I don't want to do that when I wake up on Monday morning and I don't want it. And I don't want it to be like a potential distraction. Right. So we try and get that stuff out of the way. Uh, we try and eat a little bit earlier, wind the day up a little bit earlier, so we're going to bed a little bit earlier and get a good night's sleep and get some rest. I do print my leads. I want to make sure that I have those, you know, on my desk ready to go on Monday. If there's stressful stuff that you have to deal with, I think part of it is you got to write it down and figure out, you know, that it's not going to be, it's not going to set your week. So, you know, um, and you start your week, you know, every, every uh, your week on Monday morning at 7.30, right? Yeah, I go in and start texting on Monday mornings and at 7.30, 7.30, 7.45. I get my first round of texts out. An hour to an hour and a half later, I send out a second round. Then that same schedule, really, until I fill my schedule up that for that day. Then I and do that. How many appointments you shoot for the day? Uh, always a minimum of six. Is really, is really always... You know, uh, I'm really shooting for eight just because, I mean, yesterday I had six appointments. Row one. Row one. So I had six. What would you have me do? They were older seven. leads. I yeah. sat with, they, these were these were particularly older leads. It was just an ironic batch of older, older leads. Four dollar leads. Four dollars. Um, set six. Sat with. Set S E T M N. So, so S set, set six. S -S sat sat like your fanny. Sat yeah. with. Yeah. Um, let's see. My first one ended up. We ended up having to uh, reschedule because our husband's out of the country. My second one uh, was a reschedule for the next day. So two reschedules. Then I had a, another one that got bumped. Then I sat with my third one, wrote my third, wrote that one, which was actually my fourth appointment. Then got no showed, sat with my last one, and just didn't have any way to, didn't have anything for them. Uh, so I really only sat with two. And wrote one. Wrote so one. yeah, that's about that's about normal. That's a fifty percent range. We all shoot four. Again, you book you book ten. Um, you sit with with uh, five, right? Right. Uh, two or three. Two or three. Yeah, that's about right. Ten, six, three. It's basically, book ten, six was the sit with six, right three. So that's about normal. Um, so again, it's a very it's a metrics based system. Um, the numbers can't beat you, and you can't beat the numbers. People always ask, you know, well, you know, I don't want to buy leads. Okay, then go work your warm market. You'll never make a lot of money doing that. Um, and you know, it's it's not scalable. Um, unless you're very good at making friends and very good about talking to total strangers about life insurance, which is fine. I do that all the time. But again, you got to be very active. You got to be that little that butterfly in the room, kind of like a like a realtor. We go, you're buzzing around, talking to everybody, and introduce yourself. You got to be constantly working the room, networking events, church events, whatever, and to, to constantly have a new batch of people to talk to, uh, leads um, about life insurance. So you can do it. But it's but the reason why we do the leads is that it's it's uh, it's scalable. We uh, knew a woman in California that was, in my opinion, not necessarily your favorite favorite person, but and not necessarily my favorite person either. I mean, we were somewhat friends, but she was, in my opinion, probably one of the masters at uh, like networking type events. She was she must have done probably two to four networking events every single week and she did use it she did use it it did aid her business she she she, she was consistently writing business through that uh, in her business writing business in her you know through all that networking was it enough to sustain her if she no had she not been doing and utilizing other things and her husband had a very good job then no, she probably would not have been able to support herself only on that networking business. But I say that to say this. 
many years later, she is still, she still does those events every single week. She, my point is, is that a lot of people, they do them, they say, oh, I'm, I'm going to do a um, chamber of commerce. And three weeks later, they've stopped going. Or they go, they, they go for a month, they don't write any business, or maybe they have a couple of appointments and then they quit it. You have to be, whatever you're going to do, if you're going to stand on the side of the road with one of those spinner things, you, you have to be consistent with it. You have to, you have to dig in and say, if this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Well, that's, that's true with anything. You know, it, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very difficult business, in my opinion, to do spare time. Yeah. Um, especially in the beginning. There's too many, there's too many moving parts. Yeah. You got to get good at, at uh, booking appointments, and, and that takes... Uh, being consistent every in in the act of booking appointments, you can't sit down and make a couple of phone calls and then come back three hours later make a couple more phone calls. Or if you're doing texting, mm -hmm. you, you, you gotta be you gotta you gotta have a routine and you gotta have a schedule. Yeah. Uh, or, or or that's why so many people fail in this business. Um, is is it is it they they try to do it like it's a hobby and that's fine. You wanna do it like a hobby, it's gonna pay you like a hobby. But the problem is, if people get in this business, they they treat it, they they treat it like a hobby, but they want to get paid like a business. Right. And then they and then they don't want they don't want to invest any money in it. No. They don't want to invest any time in it, but they want to make five grand a month. Yeah. Forget it. Go do something else. It doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Do so, your job or your marriage that way. Yeah. It, you won't. It won't last. The insurance industry. Many people quit. Well, that's 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 true of anything. Yeah. We live in a world where people are quitters. No one wants to stick with anything. No one wants to invest any time in anything. It's a microwave society. Everything has to be instant. And I want to, I want to invest very little, but I want to be, I want to be, I want to make millions. Doesn't work that way. There are, uh, so let's get into it. There are, there are, th in my opinion, three reasons why agents fail. The first is, we could probably add a few more to that, but the first one is lack of money. Yeah. You gotta, if you, you know, again, I, this is a leads-based sales opportunity. You, you certainly you can do it without buying leads. Um, it depends on how much money you want to make from the business. All businesses require an investment of both time and money. Hobbies do not. No. If you're going to start a business, go see if you can start a McDonald's for free. It won't happen. Go see if you can start a McDonald's and open the door without buying any hamburger meat. It won't happen. That's a business. Many of you come to this come into this game, and you you want to treat it like it's like 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 you're an employee, right? Like, and it doesn't work that way. So you got to have money to buy leads with. And you, it, I talked about on the call. I don't have time to get into today. Is people twenty five dollar themselves to death. Yep. You don't have enough leads on a twenty five dollar investment to create any kind of momentum at all. It's a law of large numbers that you can rely on. Yep. They're consistent. And they'll always tell you the truth. The law of small numbers never will. And so you buy 25 here, okay, look, if you're buying $25 leads, you're probably buying older leads, aged leads, that other agents have, have, have had in the past. Uh, for example, RB leads are $6 a piece. They've been sold to one other agent. They're eight to 10 weeks old. Well, if you buy $6 leads and you buy $25 worth, you got, you got five or six leads. Well, that lead converts on average about 16 to one. You need 16 of those leads to book one appointment. So if you have five leads, what are your chances to book any appointments? Nothing. None. God, Zero. So frustrating. And so, oh my God, Angela and Steve, the business doesn't work because just, yeah. you know I I, I I bought leads and I didn't get any appointments. Right, but you didn't buy. You didn't really buy leads. You didn't really follow. You spent the 25 bucks. You and, didn't, and, yeah. Well, you didn't follow our system. Our system is you got to spend a little minimum 250. You should get yourself to five hundred dollars a week, depending on how much you want to make in the business. Okay, if you want to make, you know, ten thousand bucks a year, okay, you don't need to spend five hundred dollars a week. But if you want to make six figures, you need to get yourself to five hundred dollars a week. Most of us are spending five to eight. Okay, and if you want to replace your job, yeah. you can't do it that way either. Good point. So you got to have money, right? And, and you can't do twenty five dollars on Monday, twenty five dollars on Tuesday. Get yourself two hundred fifty dollars with leads and, and get and go to work. Right, you have some skin in the game. Your chances of success will be far greater. The second thing is number two: lack of activity. Kind of goes back to what we, what Angela was talking about. She has a precise schedule that she works Monday through Thursday, um, and sometimes on Friday if we don't hit our goals. 
She gets, she's up at 7.30, she's, she's booking appointments. Every hour and a half, she's, re, she's reconnecting with that same lead three times a day to get her six to eight. That is activity. Then, once she gets done booking her day, she comes back and she's running those appointments until eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. That's activity. You gotta be active in this game. The third reason, and Angela, you can chime in on this one too, is not having a personal, intimate philosophy. And again, I find this to be the case. If you don't fully understand what your, it really goes back to your why. Yeah, it does. If you don't fully understand why you would do this, then you, then you shouldn't do it until you figure out what your why is. And it can't be just, I want to make a bunch of money, okay? Because you can make a bunch of money with, with, with doing, doing a lot of different things. Yeah. I'm in the life insurance business because it gives me the vehicle, the best vehicle that I've found to give me what I, what I, as Angela said, what I was deeply passionate about my entire life, which was financial success, right? To be, to, to be able to own my own income, thereby own my own life, and be able to have true residual and passive income. The insurance in vehicle was the best vehicle for me for that. On top of that, I am deathly passionate about the fact that people need to have life insurance if they have any kind of family whatsoever so that they, they they're passing that that off to their families those are three eight three reasons lack of money lack of activity and not having a personal intimate philosophy or a solid burning desire and why you would we would even do this business because look it's not easy it's not it's not an easy business it's a very prosperous business make a lot of money here and you know and do it in two or three days a week but it's not easy if you're looking for the easy train save you money don't get your license go do something else save your 25 bucks and go buy you a scratch-off ticket yeah go buy your play, I'm play, sorry play but that's game. but that's really buy you a, that, that's the name that's my thumbnail go buy you a scratch-off go buy you a scratch-off <laughs> because Rep that's really what you are that is your that is your level of I don't know what the word is engagement or commitment or that's your level of interest right I mean uh, if you're if you're going to um, suffocate it then just then just pass on it just, yep just move on yep and I hate to say that but we see so many agents that come here and they say I'm, I'm in this to win and then we say, okay, you've gone through the training, you've got your license, you've gone through our training, uh, you've, um, you know, you've set up your computer, blah blah blah, whatever, and you've done your contracting, and let's go ahead and buy some leads. And they say, oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. And then a week will go by, and we see no lead orders. And then all of a sudden, a lead order will pop up from a person, and it's fifty dollars. You've you're not putting the investment where it needs to be. Take the time to really figure out if this is something if you're, that you're passionate about, yeah. you understand what you're gonna gain, because again, if you don't understand why you would do this, you know, and it, and it, and it, and it connects to, your, to, your, to, your, to what your goals are for your life. Like for, my, for me, like I said, I wanted to be able to own my life financially. I, I want whatever I did today, I want to get, you know, I want to get paid on for the rest of my life. You know, so that's that's that residual passive type income. Uh, so I knew there wasn't anything else better than this. Figure that out before you get involved, before you get your license. If it's something you really want to do, then you got to find a, a coach or mentor that ha that is doing the business, that's putting their name on applications, that can teach you how to do this business. Andrew's a Diamond Elite producer. Uh, I've been doing this for 40 plus years. We have a great, 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 great system that we that we teach our agents how to succeed in this business, both virtually and face to face. That's far more important than the IMO, is because those are the people you're going to interact with every single day. Those are the three agents. There's probably the three reasons why agents fail. There's probably more, but hey, activity, lack of money, and not having a personal why that's deep, root, deeply rooted is about as good as it gets. Okay, guys, that's it for the week. Hey, listen, we, we don't say this often enough, but we really appreciate all of you uh, that subscribe to the channel, that like the videos, that make comments. Uh, best to be able to do this. We enjoy doing it and sharing our week with you and our rants. Especially the rants. Yeah, we're good at the rants. Have a good weekend. See you later, guys. Bye-bye now.